What's up everyone and welcome to this episode of Revive Outdoors. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe as that helps us reach more people with our content. As you saw in the title of today's video, we are going to go over Pulsar's latest update to their ballistics calculator app. I know the ballistics calculator has already been out. They published it years ago, but what they have now done is allowed you to download a profile into your scope and then if you have a laser rangefinder model, then you can actually laser rangefind the target that you're aiming at, and then it will automatically put an X over where you are supposed to aim. You have to input a lot of data, so I'm gonna talk you through those steps, but it's actually really simple. If you watch this video, I should be able to provide everything that you need to know how to do it yourself, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to grab your mobile device, and then if you have one of these scopes, I want you to pull up the Stream Vision 2 app if you're one of the Thermion owners. Um, I know that Stream Vision is used by my trail model that I have, but particular to today's video, I'm gonna be using Stream Vision 2 to start with because that's the XP50 Pro that I'm working with here. And so you're gonna pull up that Stream Vision 2 app and you're gonna connect your scope to that app first, not the ballistics calculator app. Make sure you have the latest version of everything. And then when you click into that app, what you're gonna do is you're gonna connect your device and then you're gonna go over to settings. You're gonna co connect, you're gonna click on this specific scope and then I want you to scroll down to the firmware update. So you're gonna select that firmware update and you're gonna just make sure that you have the latest firmware because if you do not, you will not have Bluetooth capability set up in the software of your scope and therefore not be able to connect to the ballistics calculator. So once you've downloaded the proper firmware update, make sure you then have the ballistics calculator app, the latest edition of that from Pulsar. So it's the Stream Vision Ballistics Calculator app. And then we're gonna dive into that. Okay, so now that you have the Ballistics Calculator app pulled up, you're gonna make sure that you turn the Bluetooth on, on your scope, and obviously on your device that you are connecting with, so via phone or tablet or whatever you are using. And then you're gonna select Bluetooth on, and then you're gonna go in here to the scope and pair the Bluetooth to from the scope to the phone and you're just going to pop up a little code in the screen you're going to in input a four digit code and then the ballistics calculator is going to be connected to the scope and once you have that step done the next step you can see here in this app it uh, has your scope connected over here as devices on the left and then you have different ballistic profiles that you can put in it you can see i've already add added the sig cross 308 ballistic profile to make it simple as we go through and input all the different data that is in the ballistics calculator to make sure that we're gonna be on target. One thing I wanted to mention is that almost every single box of ammo that you get, it may be standard on all boxes of ammo, but um, on this one, for example, you have the Hornady Precision Hunter. Over on the side, it's gonna show 308 Winchester, 178 grain, ELDX, and then as you flip it over, it's gonna have the G1 ballistic coefficient of 552, and then it's gonna have your muzzle velocity of 2,600 feet per second. So you're gonna need that data off the box to load that into the profile for your specific ballistics on this calculator, and we'll get to those steps as we progress through. But I wanna make sure that you go ahead and you find that on your box. Even though my box has 20, 2600 feet per second what I want to make sure to note is that you need to get a chronograph and you need to actually measure the velocity coming out of the end of this barrel because it's not what will be on that box so if you want exact details which you do when you're using a ballistics calculator you're going to want to get one of those chronographs and you're going to want to put it out there and measure the actual feet per second coming out of your gun specifically with your ammo just because that's what it says on the factory box doesn't mean that that is what you're going to get coming out of this gun because there's so many different variables that go into that i mean barrel length suppressor i'm sure you guys can comment and tell me a lot more things that go into that input and then also know if you're buying factory loads and you're not precisely hand loading that um, not always um, from shot to shot are they going to be exact but like i was at the range uh, a couple of days ago 
ago and I was able to put a one inch group at 600 yards with that precision hunter ammo. And that's very happy for me. I was very happy with that because that could be error on my part. Um, it could be something off barely with the round, but just know that when you're getting factory loads that everything's not perfect, but you want to dial it in as much as you can. And then as you go through the different settings on the app, one thing that it's going to tell you to do is it's going to tell you to measure the scope height. And a lot of people do not know what that means. So you're going to actually measure the center of the scope. So the direct center of where the reticle holds or just the center of the scope. So you're going to take the center of the scope and you're going to measure from there to the center bore of the barrel. And so it took me a little bit to get it exactly precise. I had to make some marks and then actually had to load a bullet in the chamber and see exactly where it settled in there to kind of line everything up. But I was able to get that measurement. So that's one thing. And then another thing it's going to ask you for when it's talking about spin drift, it's going to ask you uh, the barrel twist, which most every barrel, I think every barrel has to have it. But most barrels I know that I own, every barrel I own has the twist rate of the barrel listed here. So this is a one-tenth twist on the barrel. It's a right-hand twist on the SIG cross. And then it's going to ask you the bullet length. So let me grab a bullet real quick. And I wanted to specifically make sure that you knew this. So the bullet length, um, a lot of people will measure the entire cartridge bullet and everything um, from here to here. That is not what you want to do. Um, you actually want to measure the actual bullet that's going to be flying through the air. And then um, someone can comment. I wasn't too sure, so I, I have a ballistics chart I wanted to show you that you can pull up online that has, has almost every uh, actual bullet length in there. And then it also adds the, the tip on ones that have like a polymer tip on it. Um, I went ahead and added those two together so if someone would comment and make sure that I was right on that I added the the length of the the bullet in there with the length of the polymer tip from that chart that I have showing you right there um, so if someone could comment and make sure that I was supposed to add those two together it made sense because they're both the ones flying through the air and then that expansion tip on impact mushrooms the bullet for us but I just want to point that out don't go measure this whole bullet or this whole cartridge or cartridge bullet like don't measure that amount go onto the chart that I provided here and I'll put a link in the description so you have that. Um, so I just wanted to mention that as well. And then another thing that uh, is really neat in the uh, app itself is you can geolocate where you're at and get the exact weather data. So the barometric pressure, you can get the temperature, you can get the humidity. One thing it does not give you is the wind. And so you're going to have to figure that out yourself. I personally will use an airplane app uh, from a local airport that's close to shoot, the closest one to the shooting range that gives updated weather data. And then in person, you know, it may be showing that it's coming out of the north, but in person, it's coming out of the east. So you can go in and actually adjust that um, when you're shooting in the app as you have it connected to the device. So that's really neat. So obviously I'm not going to remember everything as we're talking here. So I'm going to do a, a voiceover with my phone because I'm actually recording with my phone. I'm going to do a voiceover going step by step of everything that we need to do. Um, if there's anything I miss or anything you have questions about, please comment and let me know. That way I can update that and respond so people can see those answers in the comment. But once you have everything loaded into the gun, what I want to show you is I'm going to range the barn over here and I'm going to range a, a shooting house across the way and we got some cows across the field. And uh, just so you see, um, I have the barrel flagged, unloaded, bolts back, so I'm uh, safe here. But I'm going to just aim around and range different things for you. So I'm going to hit the record button here, and uh, I'm going to range the barn so you can see that. And then not much difference on the barn. Um, let's see about the shooting house over here. So the shooting house, it has a little bit of change with that X popping. I'm not a real big fan of the red X. Um, I don't like things sideways. I would prefer a uh, vertical crosshair. So if Pulsar can hear me and they update that, that would be awesome. I'm sure I'm not the only one that doesn't like a red X as the indicator there, but I understand that they wanted to do something different um, because a lot of us are using the vertical crosshair so it could kind of overlap each other, but it would be nice to have, um, you know, maybe, I don't know, something different. 
And, uh, but that is pretty much it in a nutshell. It's really simple. Um, so this is going to be part one of this two-part episode. What I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to take this out to the range that uh, I go to. I just recently tested this Warrior tripod, so you're going to see um, how I was able to be standing and get an inch group um, with this Warrior tripod at 600 yards. Um, but the range I go to has electronic displays. It's uh, the CMP at Talladega um, Civilian Marksmanship Program, I think is what it stands for at Talladega. Really incredible range if you're even anywhere close to Talladega or traveling through and you uh, love to shoot. That is a really neat range. It's got all kinds of different things that you can go and do there from long range to pistols to shotgun trap. Um, really, really cool um, premiere. I mean, it's probably one of the nicest shooting ranges in the country. Um, just an incredible range. But I'm going to take this out to the range and I am going to shoot it and see how the ballistics calculator works. I mean, see how it plays out um, because I'm really interested to see um, as I was aiming today, that indicator looked a lot lower than what I was shooting at the range the other day before I had loaded all this ballistics profile into it. So I'm really interested to see um, how that really if it lines up, if it's accurate, um, kind of work out all the kinks there. And then I'm going to try to get a chronograph, a chronograph to measure my actual muzzle velocity coming out of this with the suppressor and this gun. That way I know um, I loaded 2,600 feet per second because that's what the box has, but I know it's going to be different when I actually shoot it uh, out of this gun. But, uh... The first thing that you want to do is pull up the Stream Vision Ballistics app, download that onto your phone or tablet. And then when you pull it up, it's going to come to the calculator usually naturally. You can see over here on the left, it has your devices. So I've already added my scope into here. And then the next one is going to be profiles. You can go in and add multiple profiles. And then the calculator itself allows you to select the device that you have and then you can go in and select different profiles that you have and then it's going to show you can choose the different drops however you want to choose them there moa mil centimeters or inches and then the same thing with the drift you can choose different ones there and then the click value you can see the different options on that outdoor weather conditions again you can go in and manipulate those or you can set them by geolocation of where you're at and then you can sit here and play around with the distance and the angle on the calculator here and it'll give you different uh, profiles so let's see if i select the xp50 and then i select my sig you can see here at 813 meters that this is where the reticle is going to be placed and you can play around with that as you adjust the distances and then this will give you the table for all of those as well so that's something neat that you can play around with and then you can save those tables here you can add tables and then you have the settings button which just allows you to choose the angle but let's start by selecting our scope so this is going to be a step-by-step -step for loading your ballistics profile to your specific scope so you're going to click on that and then it is going to connect i am not connected to my scope right now because i'm in my house showing this to you but this is what it would pull up you'd be able to select different profiles and then i'm going to go step by step to show you how to load your own profiles when you go into the profile here you can name it and then you can choose what reticle and what level uh, or what retic reticle color you want and then what level of brightness that you want and then when it comes down to the bullets and ammunition that it has it's going to already have ballistic parameters checked but if not just make sure it's there and then you can go through and you can actually scroll and click um, and see if your ammo is already loaded in here um, on the hornady uh, it was not. I have already checked. So I had to make a custom profile there. And then I'll show you as you go through and add all the different things. So the ballistic coefficient um, is 5.52 based off the ammo box I told you earlier. So I entered 5.52. And then it was a G1 profile. And then it was shooting. So you can see um, different profiles here. G1 all the way down to the GP. Um, I selected G1. 
and then 2,500 feet per second is what the box said. Again, you wanna get a chronograph and make sure that's actually what's coming out. And then on spin drift, this does not have to be selected. You can toggle this on and off, but if you do, it's gonna be your bullet weight there. So 178 grains is what I'm shooting. And then the length goes back to that chart that I told you about earlier with JBM Ballistics. So Juliet Bravo Mike Ballistics, um, whoever created that website, uh, thank you for doing that because it is incredible. So then you can go on and get your bullet length. Again, do not measure the full bullet plus the cartridge length. Go on to that website and get that. And then whatever caliber that you are going to be shooting there and then your barrel twist you want to add that in i'm shooting the sig 308 sig cross 308 so that's going to be uh 10 uh 10 to 1 1 to 10 um barrel twist uh, twist direction is right and then the rifle scope's height if you remember earlier in the video you want to measure this from the center of the scope to the center of the barrel and then the range that you have your zero at you can do it in meters or yards and you can put whatever you end up zeroing it at and then the outdoor weather conditions again you can enter that in here and once you're done you're just going to go to the top right and hit save and then if your device is connected um, then you can click on that device and make sure that you have that one check marked again I don't but you want to just make sure on your profiles for your specific device that you have it checked and then it allows you to go in here and select that on the calculator and play around with that but then um, once you have all that done you're set ready to go you just make sure you choose that specific profile in your scope and then when you laser range find whatever your target is you'll start to see that red x reticle move around Around accordingly so as you see if you were um, let's go to yards because I know that's what most of you will use um, so if you're at 134 yards you can see it's almost dead on but as you increase the yardage it's gonna move around and then if you toggle in the angle there it's gonna play a difference in that as well so pretty neat overall but that's your step-by-step -step ballistics calculator guide I just want to say thank you again for watching. If you have any tips, suggestions, advice for me as I walk through any of this, I'm learning just as much as you are about all of this. If you have any videos you want me to do, let me know. But be sure to subscribe so you don't miss part two of me actually taking this out to the range and testing it and seeing, okay, I aimed here, this is where it hit and give a lot of actual feedback on the range because I know that's a lot of what you want to see because you want to know if you can trust this or not. And uh, some of it could be user error on the input side. So I wanted to start there and then on the second part, go out to the range and actually test it for you. So thank you again for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you catch that part two. We'll see you next time.